Have you ever been driving down the freeway on your way to some amazing adventure and got caught behind a big rig? And at some point, you get a big old whiff of that exhaust? Whew. This just happened to me the other day. And I thought to myself, as I'm sure you have as well, wouldn't it be nice if these bad boys were electric? Yeah, it would be not just for the smell of the exhaust, but all of the environmental concerns that go along with the trucking industry. But in order to electrify on-highway and off-highway vehicles, we need heavy-duty connectors that address a multitude of design considerations that these vehicles require. Maybe we should do a chalk talk about that. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, the next generation of electric vehicles, including trucks, buses, construction, and recreational vehicles, will need connectivity solutions that are modular, scalable, high performance, and can operate in harsh environments. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Daniel Domka from TE Connectivity and I examine the design considerations for next-generation e-mobility applications and the benefits that TE Connectivity's PowerTube HVP HD connector series brings to these designs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure to be part of this discussion. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about the enablement of the evolution of e-mobility today. So let's talk about the transportation sector as a whole. We're looking at distinctly different markets within this sector, right? This is correct. So we within TE, we have established a so-called ICT business unit, which stands for Industrial Commercial Transportation. And this is where we cover majorly the on-highway segment, which is the trucks, the buses, every kind of emergency or specialty vehicles. And then we have the off-highway segment where we cover everything around construction vehicles, agriculture vehicles. And then we have a broad segment within this area that is called this all mining equipment that is very much going now electrified. And then the recreational segment where we have different kind of marine applications, recreational vehicles, and then the broad area of two wheelers. Okay, so let's talk specifically about e-mobility. So when we look into the e-mobility space and all this transition going from fossil fuel to regenerative energy, it's basically all around CO2 and emission reduction. We have local, we have global CO2 targets that all this truck manufacturer and other vehicle manufacturer, they have to reach these goals. And so it is all around removing the combustion engine from their vehicle and bringing in something with a regenerative energy. So we are talking here specifically either about battery electric powered vehicle or fuel cell electric vehicles. And they typically run under this umbrella of zero emission vehicles. Okay, so Daniel, what kind of trends are you seeing in this space lately? If we talk about current market trends, we see a very different local versus global CO2 legislation means that there are regions where there are very strict CO2 targets in place. Others are following. We call them fast followers. But generally, we see that all major Western OEMs are bringing battery electric vehicle platforms within the next two to latest four years. And there is a broad fuel cell platform development going on, especially for this bigger class eight trucks. And with all this, we see this growing need for infrastructure. We see incentive plans in place to boost and support the electrification and adoption rate for these electric vehicles. And then it's all about efficiency. It's all about making sure that this transition will go on smoothly. 
Excellent. Okay, so let's talk in a bit more depth about the connectivity challenges and these kind of designs. What kind of challenges are you seeing? So if we talk about challenges, we always have to understand that there are always challenges around connectors within an automotive space. Why? Because we generally see different operation conditions. There is always a moving part, means we experience vibration. But if we move from a personal car, which is typically a passenger car, towards a commercial vehicle, we see that there are even more challenging requirements. Why? Because typically these vehicles are far bigger. So just to move this kind of vehicle requires more power. It requires, if it's an electric one, it requires higher currents. But then also the lifetime requirements and in general, the harsh environment where these vehicles are operated. So we have much more dust and gravel. We have engine fluids. We have a lot of more moisture around the area where these vehicles are operated. We have extreme temperatures. And just because the battery systems, for example, are far bigger compared to a passenger car, there is a strong expectation about higher charging speeds that is stressing the whole system much more than a traditional passenger car. So Daniel, what kind of solutions does TE offer to help address these issues? So we as TE, we were confronted several years back with the serious question, if we will take the risk and start a whole new platform and product portfolio development specifically for this commercial vehicle segment. And at that time, we saw a lot of companies taking existing automotive slash passenger car components, twisting them to reach higher requirements or having these industrial connectors that are very big, very robust, but not originally developed to the standards of the vehicle standards that we have in place right now. So the question was, will TE now start this specific development for this specific market segment? And that time we said, yes, we want to do this because we saw the need, we saw the value to have a connector system and portfolio developed for commercial vehicle needs under the standards and specifications. And this is where we are now offering a variety of connectors that are starting from the smaller connector series, going over different connectors that are either connectorized, as we call it, or bolted connectors, but also every kind of charging inlet that we are using within these commercial vehicles. So what kind of applications would this connector be a good fit for? This specific connector that we call power tube or HVP, that stands for high volt power, HD for heavy duty. So it's the power tube connector series and it ranges from 35 square millimeter towards 150 square millimeters. So the whole connector series is covering a wide range of different wire cross section. This is necessary because we have different applications that we cover with this connector series. So if we talk about applications, it's basically everything that is beyond the charging inlet. So we have the onboard charger, we have the battery pack, we have any kind of power distribution units, we have the high power auxiliaries, we have power electronics and inverters within the powertrain application, including the e-motors that are then finally driving the whole vehicle. So in short, we have two different sizes within this product family called PowerTube. The one is the 1000 series, the other one is the 1400 series. The one coming, the smaller with a 10 millimeter round contact system covering the 35, 50 and 70 square millimeter. The bigger brother of it is the 1400 series with the 14 millimeter round contact system covering the 70, 95, 120 and 150 square millimeter. We have for both an overlap of 
at the 70 square millimeter mark. The reason for it is that depending on the application, depending on operation condition, we can either still go with a smaller connector system or because of peaks that we see within the system, we already need to switch over to the bigger connector series. And this is where the 70 square millimeter mark is a mark where we can decide either or. Okay. So what kind of specs are we talking about here? So in terms of specs, we also try to be very close to the needs that we see, not only for on-road applications, but also off-road applications. If we look, for example, the dielectric strength, we have lifted the dielectric strength for 4,000 volt DC up to 5,500 meter altitude. Why is this interesting? Because this connector system can serve every kind of function for agriculture or mining equipment that we still see operating at this high altitude. If we are talking about the current level, we see that the 1000 series is ranging up to 300 amps continuous current, for sure, always depending on the system temperature and the operating condition. But in general, we can say that we can support 300 amps continuous. For the 1400 series, we can guarantee with the largest wire size up to 580 amps continuous. Always depending on peaks and the overall system temperature, but we see right now customers using it up to 580 amps continuous. On the other side, shielding, it's a fully shielded system. It is validated to a vibration level that is a standard within the commercial vehicle segment. It's the ISO 16750 Three, the Profile 7, which is typically a chassis mount application, but then the Test 9, which is then going closer to the axle application, powertrain application. This connector system, both sizes are validated up to the Profile 9. We offer different pin counts. It's a one, two, or three pin count orientation. It's either a 180 or 90 degree cable outlet. It's a fully sealed system, IP67, IP6K, 9K, IPX8, all the standards that are required for this kind of applications. We carry all relevant safety standards to cover the use of this connector system within a movable vehicle. And on the other side, we have broadened the spectrum of different coatings. So we are coming for this connector system with 12 different codes that are mechanical and color coded. They are related to each other just to make sure we have enough modularity that we offer for bigger vehicles where we have multi-connectors, but we still ensure that the right connector goes to the right interface. On the other side, high corrosion resistance for special vehicles. A lot of these connectors are exposed to the outside. They are visible. So this is where corrosion plays a very significant role. And then other things like connector position assurance, where to disconnect the connector, we offer different options, either tool actuated or finger actuated. So Overall, we can say it is a very modular, it is a scalable design, specially designed for heavy-duty applications. All right. So, Daniel, what do you think are the biggest benefits of this solution? So if we are talking about the value proposition of this connector series, we are very confident, and this is the continuous feedback that we get from our customers, is that the setup itself, how we have built the design for this connector system, is really bringing the value not only on the preparation of the different aggregates where we are using the components, but also during the vehicle manufacturing process. Why? On one side, we are offering a one-pin connector on the harness side, which makes the harness process very simple, very straightforward, only one orientation. On the other side, we are offering the modularity on this connector series in a way that the orientation, we are switching over from the connector side 
to the aggregate side. So that means the part that is assembled to the aggregate is either a 90 degree or a 180 degree outlet. But the interface is always the exact same. So that means you as a customer, you can decide for your end customer if it's a 90 degree or 180 degree cable outlet. If they change the wire routing and they need to change the outlet, you can only exchange the part that we supply to you without changing anything on your side because the interface geometry is exactly the same. So this is where we are bringing a lot of diversity a lot of modularity that makes it very easy for the system integration. So speaking of modularity, can we talk a bit more about that aspect of this solution? We usually split the modularity and scalability approach in two areas. The one is the harness side, which is then linked to the connector. And the other one is then linked predominantly to the part that is added to the aggregate any kind of distribution unit or power electronics, whatever it is. And if we look to the harness side, we have a connector system that is circular, which is very important for the wire routing within a vehicle. Why? Because we have extended wire lengths. If we're talking about wires that are ranging from the backside to the front side of a truck, the wire length is significantly longer if we compare it, for example, to a passenger car. And this is why for a vehicle manufacturer, it is very important that they have a secure and safe wire routing within their frame. And this is where we come in with our connector design that is circular, very minimal in term of size. So they are able to route this harness through small holes within the frame to ensure that they have a very efficient wire routing. On the other side, the feature that we are bringing in here is that the harness manufacturer, they don't have to build the harness with an orientation on the connector side. Means if there is a misalignment between the connector and the counterpiece, the connector, it is possible to rotate the connector 360 degree around the cable. Why is this interesting? Why is this important? Because it simplifies the harness process on one side. On the other side, it removes all stress, all force that is put into the connector if there is a misalignment in the connector header assembly. Okay, so Daniel, did I see that these connectors are also color-coded? That's the thing that we brought in with this connector system is that we have not only a mechanical coding that is important to ensure that every connector goes into the right place. So that means if you see here on this page, there is a mechanical coding with the small rips on the bottom of this front part, but also they are all linked to different colors. So that means we have a mechanical, but also a visual indication to make the assembly and the connection process easier and more intuitive. That means even if there is a connector built up at the harness maker that is carrying wrong coding, the interesting part about this assembly is that the front piece, which is the tip of the connector, that's exchangeable. So that means if there is at the very end a different coding necessary, we are able to exchange the coding piece on site, and then we can ensure the mateability between the connector and the counterpart, which is the header. All right. So, Daniel, are there any other scalability or modularity benefits here? So, if you see the backside of the header, and that's typically the part that is going onto any kind of aggregate, you will recognize a square shape connection point. And a lot of people are asking, why do you have this heavy, complex, square-shaped connection point? But the reason for it is that we are able with this square-shaped design to position the threaded insert to five different directions. Why is this so interesting? It's because that enables for you as a customer the best tool access. So that means 
let's just imagine you have an aggregate where you install this kind of connector system, but the accessibility is limited. And so you need a certain direction how you connect the inside piece to this connector. We can offer you different mounting directions in total five to just give you the possibility to have the best efficiency, the best manufacturing process with this kind of connector system. And even on this page, you can also see that the exchange in between the one pin connector, the two pin connector and the three pin connector configuration is exchangeable one on one. So let's do an example. If you have a two pin 180 degree connector assembly on our distribution unit, and you have a new customer that is asking for a 90 degree outlet. The only thing that you need to change is you are ordering another piece from TE. You don't have to change anything on your side because the interface, again, is exactly the same between these two variants. All right. So how much current can these connectors handle? If we talk about the maximum current capability for this connector system, I just want to show here one example because there is a lot of confusion out there about the maximum current, about the continuous current, and then taking all the safety relevant and aging relevant parameters for a connector system within this kind of vehicles. We just want to show not only the so-called derating curve that is a standard visualization graph for the continuous maximum current capability, but we rather prefer this kind of matrix where we show the wire size, different current profiles, the ambient temperature that is driving the limitation within a system, and then the duration that we can operate this system with this particular temperature and current. So let's do an example here. If we have a charging system and you want to have a very high power charging current with a 120 square millimeter cable, we know that typically the ambient temperature is somewhere around maximum 45, maybe in extreme regions it's reaching 50 degrees C. And that means we are more than okay to run this connector system up to 35 minutes without reaching any critical limit here. We can even charge the battery system with 900 amps under these conditions for 10 minutes. So that means this kind of matrix helps to understand the real limitation of this connector system and how much current we can drive for a particular temperature and a particular time. This will help to design the right cross-section, the right connector size within to your vehicle without over-dimensioning it or under-dimensioning it. Okay, so can you also talk about that applied cost benefit you mentioned earlier? What exactly do you mean by that? So the total applied cost that we see reduced with this connector system simply is the target that we are coming with an increased modularity on the connector system side, which makes the integration much more easy for you as an aggregate manufacturer or a vehicle manufacturer. Why? Because we are offering a variety of different configurations, yet with a limited adjustment on the system level. So that means on one side, the modularity and scalability is given. On the other side, the number of single components that are used to build up this connector system are also reduced to the very minimum to make a very efficient, to make a very streamlined assembly on the harness making process side, but also for the integration into the vehicle. All right. So before we go, Daniel, can you recap your main points? So if we are talking about key takeaways from this process,
product portfolio that we have designed and developed specifically for a commercial vehicle use, we see that we are fulfilling on one side the highest standards and requirements within this segment. On the other side, we are offering a wide variety of different configurations without asking our customer always to change something on their side. We are coming in with modularity and scalability approaches, and we have this spectrum of different cable sizes. We are offering various orientation and cable outlets, yet on the other side, the integration on a vehicle level is simplified. So robust, heavy-duty connector system fulfilling all the requirements for this segment. Fantastic. Well, Daniel, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.